Christina loves woman. <laughs> it is so good to be here with you. I cannot even begin to fathom the kind of shit we are going to get into together today. <laughs> It'll be good. It'll be good. <laughs> So just to set everyone else up, so Christine and I have been hanging out and chatting about great things before coming here to do this with you all, but what was kind of mind blowing for me, I mean, there's a lot of pieces and we'll go into some of them, but was Christina has just come back from doing medicine ceremony, plant medicine down in Peru and Costa Rica. Has, oh, Costa Rica. I thought it was Peru. Oh, good. Thank you. Um, doing plant medicine and what came through really strongly was feminine, divine feminine and working in divine feminine energy. And she just comes back from that journey. And I reach out to her saying, hey, <laughs> want to jam together? She's like, yeah, pretty <laughs> fucking perfect. <laughs> Woman, can you share something around that with us? Just anything that's kind of coming in this moment. Sure, sure. So, um, you know, I've been working with plant medicine for a really long time. And, you know, in the last, I would say last couple of years, the the kind of the medicine that's been coming through is is this working with feminine energy and, and actually having it rise within me, which is something that's very foreign to me. Uh, so I have, I have naturally very masculine dominant energy and I know that I've spent lifetimes and lifetimes as a man. So this time incarnating in a female body is a little bit awkward. <laughs> it's been a little bit awkward for me. And I, and I, um, and I know that I did that on purpose, right? Like I, I incarnated in this feminine body to have access to the feminine mysteries and to genetically have access to those mysteries more deeply. But at the same time, it's an energy that I'm still at times tremendously uncomfortable with, especially the deeper we go, especially when we get into the sex magic. You know, I, I loved your last video on, you know, ISIS and just the, the mysteries of sex magic and sex alchemy. I know that's a part of my path, but sometimes it gets a little tricky to get in there because when that kind of power starts to come up, my masculine starts to go. Uh, what the hell is that? Control yourself, push down, push down. And so the medicine has been working with me on that for, for quite a while. And, and in this last trip to Costa Rica, she was pretty, you know, gave me a little bit of warning signs, told me I needed to slow down, that I needed to stop working the way that I was working, that I was going to get myself sick if I continued to do that. And I could feel it in my body that I was getting sick. Yeah. And, and she said, you know, that's not the way you're, you're not here to do it that path that way anymore. You're here to do it. And I could feel it. If she wants me more in a feminine energy and I could feel that resonance all throughout my body. Right. Like um, ayahuasca has been a great teacher of mine. And this is one of the things that she conveys messages. But I know when those messages are coming from me and are for me. Right. Because that's an important part of, of any kind of journey that you do. And so I could feel that there's such a strong soul resonance for me to really fully come into feminine energy, but it's a struggle for me in so many ways, a lot of times. So I'm still in this kind of integration phase where I'm like, okay, what does it mean to slow down? And what does it mean to be more in feminine energy? And, and what does manifesting my mission and manifesting a fulfilling and happy life, what does it look like coming from the feminine? And I've been doing this work for quite a while, but it seems like it's going in layers, right? Like the spiral, right? The never ending spiral of deepening and deepening and deepening. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, I thought I got this shit. Uh, no. <laughs> Here, oh, here's another layer. Oh my God. Is there a bottom? Is there a bottom to this spiral? Good old Mary go round. Just one more time around. And again. <laughs> yeah. Woman, I would love, I just find, oh, there is so much here. And like the energetics that your just you, your physical being, your physical form, who you are, how you express in the world, I think is so stunning and so beautiful and so amazing that you are in this feminine form and you express such a strong beautiful pure clean divine masculine i mean it just i feel it it actually is so strong that it 
polarizes me into divine feminine, right? It's so beautiful and amazing to just be dancing in these polarities with you and this energy and, and witnessing you and hearing you speak about it. The words, um, my masculine was pushing, pushes it down uh, at certain parts of this, like embodiment of the feminine energy or allowing her to rise. Can you talk a little bit more about how that shows up for you or maybe how, how it shows up for others that you maybe even work with too? Yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. That would be great. So, so for me and, you know, in the thousands of people that I've worked with and in my own life, really it's, it's, that has shown up best explained, uh, as a struggle between mind and heart. So I know I'm in my feminine when I'm, when I drop down into my body, um, sometimes low. So I know I'm really an old feminine energy when I'm down low, when I'm able to go into the pelvis, when I'm able to go down, 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 I could feel, but then there's, um, there's a higher, um, not higher as in pure, but I, I know you're going to understand this. And I know everybody that's, that's hearing this is going to understand this, but there's a higher feminine that I could attain at the heart. It's a more, um, I don't know, would you call that more ISIS? Like, like that's exactly that what you would say. Okay. Yeah. So I could feel her more at the heart and it's just this beautiful, just, I've never felt anything like it's this incredible, unconditionally loving, but also uh, it's a combination of the seven faces that you've talked about, really. It's like, it's unconditionally loving in kind of a mothering way, but also like a really powerful way and like a Durga way and like, don't mess with me kind of way. And sometimes it's kind of confusing because it's like all of them here in the heart. And then when the masculine is overpowering, I'm, I polarize up into the mind. And that's not always easy for me because I have naturally a strong mind and I have naturally a strong masculine energy. And what I've noticed is that the, there was a lot of wounding there. There was a lot of wounding having to do, so I incarnated with a lot of masculine templates. My energy is naturally masculine. So I could feel a lot of, and I've had to do a lot of healing work around the wounds of war, the wounds of being a warrior, but also the wounds of dishonoring the feminine. I could feel that within me. Yeah. And so when she would come up, there'd be remnants of the masculine going, you sit down, woman, kind of like that. <laughs> and I could feel that in me and it was very painful. And then I could feel that at the same time that the masculine was doing that, he was also deeply wounded and desperate for this feminine's love and acceptance and nurturing. And he just did not know how to bridge that gap, you know? And a lot of times the example I use, because uh, this comes, these I have a lot of flashbacks, like past life memory flashbacks, is an image of, imagine a warrior, like imagine this gladiator that goes off to war and is like for years and years, just chopping head and, you know, killing people. And it's just violence and violence and violence. And then suddenly the war is over and he's told to go back home to his woman. And try to feel how, how can this man, how can this warrior, and again, I'm using man and woman, not gender. We're gonna, we have to talk about that a little bit because I, I, I wanna talk about that a little bit because I awesome. feel a big pull for that. So I don't wanna gender it. So, uh, but I'm just using this as a way to kind of have this story. So imagine this warrior that spent years just in total violence, go home to the gentleness of, of his partner how does he disarm to receive her love after everything that he's been through? Hence the sacred prostitute, right? Taking the war out of men, taking the war out of the masculine. That's one of the gifts of the feminine that I think we've lost in our culture. We've lost that. There's that bridge. And you were just talking about that last video on sex magic. And that's, that's part of that gift. Yeah. So keep, yeah. keep going. And so, so no, so that's kind of, uh, can I get, can I give the little side note here that I wanted oh, to gender. give on, yes, the, on the gendering? Cause before we forget, cause this is really important and it's a really important aspect in my work that I've been trying to 
bridge because uh, I've had quite a few people when I talk about masculine or feminine, I've had quite a few emails from my audience, people saying, you know, can you please stop talking about men and women because I'm non-binary, um, you know, and it kind of leaves us out. And I understand that to a certain respect too, because I'm gay. And when, when I read Tantra texts, when I read uh, all kinds of sex magic things, it's usually there, it's very heteronormative. And so I sometimes feel left out because then, you know, when we're trying to have these conversations about sex magic, well, what happens between same sex couples or what happens with non-binary people that don't identify uh, with specific genders? And so I just wanted to throw this out because this is something actually um, that would be cool to get your input on. Like, how, how do you navigate that, you know, kind of helping people with masculine, feminine, but leaving gender out is sometimes really hard, right? Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. And there are um, biological aspects to my body that are different to my male man partner's body. Biologically, hormonally, chemical, there are differences. Energetically, he can go into the feminine just as well as I can. Energetically, I can go into the masculine just as well as he can. But there are there are different, so it's like not throwing the baby out with the bathwater for me. Yes, it's, yes, yes. yes, fuck yeah. Let's fuck off genders. Let's let's fuck off all of these social norms and all of these social constructs and let's fuck off sexuality and like what, what all of that stuff, but let's also not throw the baby out with the bathwater. Yes, I like, sure that. I like that. That we're honoring that too, because I'm a woman. I have a womb. I can make a baby. And to me, that's um there's an honor and a reverence in that and i don't want to lose that for myself by yeah, going yeah. ah no big deal let's not talk about that so i love that i love that that's a good that's a good yeah yeah and it's it's something that i that i've pondered a lot especially when you're you know when you're into the conversations on tantra or sex magic or sex alchemy that's when things start to get a little bit complicated with me because you know, it's like when when these things are so black and white sometimes, especially talking about sex magic and sex alchemy, when when they say, you know, the man and the woman, and I'm like, wait a minute, this leaves me out. Like, what about me and another woman? Like, what the hell? <laughs> I want to know how to do that. Like, what's going on here? <laughs> totally. And, you know, I think also I know that I screw it up, right? I know that like I get into the middle of something and I'm just whoa, going off and I'm like, fuck, I've totally misworded that. And it's, yeah, it's yeah. also like doing the best I can with what I've got in the moment. This and is hard. This is hard. It's hard talking about it. Right? Yeah. You don't even yeah. have the right words most of the time. And so my, my partner, who's a man and he's who I explored all of those things that I spoke about on sex magic with, and he listened to the podcast yesterday. And he says to me, you did a great job with your wording because you fuck up sometimes. I mean, he's my harshest critic, which is great. He's like, you fuck up a lot of times, but you did a great job. You even said you don't need to have a penis to have a shaft of light. You don't need to have a physical penis. He's like, she's like, just keep doing that. Keep making sure that you're being he's like, because Sabrina, I've seen your cock and it is a cock. <laughs> Oh my God, that's so awesome. Woman, well, I'm so glad that you're bringing up the gender conversation. So glad we got to dive into it. And just, is there anything else that you feel to add around gender or around sexual preferences in this moment? I think, I think probably the only thing that I'm learning to navigate, um, you know, and I'm, I'm kind of learning on my own and learning from you and learning from, you know, a bunch of different people is, is to really, but especially from understanding this from my path, is the understanding of the masculine and the feminine as internal energies, regardless of gender. And, and really understanding that, that that union between these two energies, it has got to be occurring within you, regardless of whatever partner manifests in your external world, partner or partners, you know, like, whether we're talking about polyamory or we're talking about what, whatever other, uh, you know, kind of uh, orientation or the way that our sexuality or, or these energies expressed outward is pretty irrelevant 
if these two energies are not uh, united within. And I, I think that's probably the main focus really. And the, the only comment I would have to add to what we've already said is, is just really the focus on the union between these two. And then however it expresses in the outer world is, is beautiful and wonderful, um, but it's an extension of whatever healing and whatever merging and union has gone on within you already. Oh, you are singing. That is music to my ears. And for me, it was the masculine energy that came first. It was really working. And how it shows up for me is top down, top down. So if I'm working with the energy, it's top down. It's, it's, it's coming from the heights and it's like, consciousness or just light flooding in through the crown coming down and then when i work with the feminine it's bottom up it's it's rising kundalini it's the kundalini energy coming coming from beneath and um, part of the reason that i've had to step out of rewilding for women is because it was breaking me that it was gender specific mm. breaking me that I was a part of keeping the feminine mysteries from every single person, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I love women's circles. I love women's spaces. I have such deep reverence for women, women's circles and women's work. And, um, but it's changing. It's, it's, yeah. and, and pushing into that. that yeah. Real... And I, and I think, you know, I think it's changing too, because, uh, you know, the energy, just the way that these new souls are incarnating is just, it's just oh. extraordinary. I mean, they are so outside of the box, you know, just to tell you a quick story, one of my favorite stories coming from a yes. new little soul. So one of my best friends, she's got, she's got two children and they're little aliens. I call them little aliens because they have come so not formatted for this world. And so one of my favorite stories is the one she tells of her, of her, of her uh, daughter, she was probably six now, but she was probably four at the time when this episode happened and she came home and, you know, my friend just randomly just asked, you know, just kind of in a joke, kind of kidding around, just asked her daughter, so honey, you know, like, do you have a boyfriend yet? And, and I kid you not, four years old, she looks up at mom and she's like, yeah, I have a boyfriend and a girlfriend, but, she, but it was the way that she looked at her mom. It was kind of like, it was this look of, why did you only ask me about the boyfriend? And I thought that was the best representation of what's happening on the planet right now is people are becoming more fluid. They're becoming more ascended in their energy. And they're just throwing all this bullshit about like being straight or gay or whatever or whatever like all of this duality is being thrown out the window and people are just these new souls are coming in really to like just break everything right hundred percent hundred percent even the the vast difference of be in a retreat holding space and you'll hear a woman in her 40s my age talk and then a woman in her early 30s talk and it is an enormous amount of difference around gender, around sexual expression. And it's just, it's, thank God they're doing what they're doing. And these young little beings coming in and just looking at us like, what? Like, what? 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 <laughs> but wouldn't you, wouldn't you, um, don't you consider that kind of a, the materialization of the divine feminine coming up, right? Yes. Yes, it's like the physical expression of us owning both parts, right, of the sacred union of the divine feminine rising the, and that that marriage happening within the marriage between the masculine and the feminine. And this is just how it's manifesting in the world and the physical expression of it. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I love that so much. Oh, God, and thank God that we're coming into a place of wholeness and the challenges that it's throwing up as we do step into this place of whole i am whole sovereign being yes. right i am both masculine and both feminine and then to come into relationship with another whole sovereign being yes. both masculine and both feminine right and now 
how do we dance in polarity? What, what the hell do we do now? Because what you, the role you held and the role I held is completely obliterated. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I love that so much. Oh, woman, well, I, I wanna hear more about um, maybe sticking with this like whole sovereign self component and I don't know, I want this to serve, like I really want this to serve our communities and, and the people who hang out with us and maybe just feeling into like what would most serve to share around this like whole sovereign being or anything along those lines. Let me, let me feel about that a little bit. So just about people coming into wholeness? Yeah, or even your journey coming into wholeness or, you know, the wholeness that is the masculine and the feminine and them coming into harmony and them dancing in union versus battling the shit out of each other. <laughs> well, that took a while. That took a while, you know, <laughs> and I think it takes a while for, um, you know, for a lot of us that come, especially from severe trauma, which is, you know, what I had to, to overcome throughout my life. And, and I think that that whenever you come from any kind of severe trauma, especially early on in your childhood, the fragmentation occurs, right? So you already start, it's like you come, you come into life and you, if you encounter any kind of trauma or difficulties in your childhood, you start to fragment, fragment. So it's like the masculine feminine fragmentation is the least of your worries because you got so much shit going on that you don't even know, like, you know, I, I didn't know to call it feminine masculine uh, fragmentation. I just knew that that there was a lot of trauma that I needed to heal. And so I think since my spiritual awakening, which was about 2000, end of 2012, beginning of 2013, when my marriage fell apart and I literally at that moment, I said, okay, well, this hasn't worked out so well. So, and I had, I was very conscious that it had been a life that I had created with my mind. So I didn't know how to put masculine into it. I didn't know how to talk about energies, but I knew how to talk about my mind. I created a life of that my mind wanted and it's not working out so well. So I'm going to dip down into the heart, whatever the hell that means. I don't have no idea what that means. I didn't know to call it the feminine at the time, but I knew I had to dip down. And so that started the journey of me basically, you know, one fragment at a time, just, just healing myself and coming into union with self. Um, and it was only, I would say maybe the last, maybe the last four or five years have been a more intense conscious work between feminine and masculine energies and it's because I have this really strong pull towards sacred partnership so it's something that it's something that I that I fought for for a while because there's a part of me <laughs> there's a part of me that would love to just be dropped in a forest and be a hermit my whole life and I would be totally happy with that and then and then there's another part of me down in the heart that says nope in this lifetime, you're here to be in sacred partnership. And I'm like, great. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell does that mean? And so I've tried, I've attempted to come into sacred partnership quite a few times. And I, I just, I, I, I end up feeling like, what the hell just happened? Was that a train wreck? Did I just get hit by a car? Was that, is that like, a <laughs> and so basically at this point in my life, I've accepted that a huge part of my, of my path is sacred partnership. Um, and, and I'm preparing myself for that sacred partnership. And I've already told the universe, don't bring me a regular relationship. I'm not looking for a regular relationship. I'm looking for a relationship that changes templates and that is sacred. And so I think it was when I started to tap into that pinging in my heart that I was here for sacred partnership that I started to go more into Tantra that I started to go more into consciously understanding feminine energy, masculine energy. And the more I went into that work, the closer they came to each other and the closer they came to each other, the more you could see the shit that was going on between them. <laughs> and so then I'd have to see one thing. I'd, I'd have to, one day I'd see the masculine trying to dishonor the feminine and not respecting her and looking down on her. 
And then the next day I would see the feminine with that conniving, manipulative kind of energy that needed to be healed too. And every day I'd work with these different shadows of each of the energies. And the more I worked with them, the closer they came together. So that's, that's been kind of my journey into to sovereignty really has been not only a, a, a harmonizing of these two energies, but for me coming into sovereignty really has had a lot to do with connecting with, with powerful feminine archetypal energies within me. And it's a lot, it was a lot of, of solar plexus, third chakra kind of work where it was just, uh, just me standing on my own two feet. This is who I am. I'm not going to explain who I am anymore. I'm not going to apologize for who I am anymore. I'm not going to try and mold myself to be a certain way so that others accept me. All that shit just went out the door. Um, and I think it's, it's, it's because now it's very consciously because it's work between uh, feminine and masculine for sure. But, but I would say that the sovereignty part, because my masculine was already well developed in the sovereignty part, right? Like warrior energy, like don't mess with me. No problem there with sovereignty. It was the feminine that was having a little bit harder time with the sovereignty because she kept giving her power away, right? Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, woman, you are finding amazing words and amazing ways to describe such themes that I hear so frequently, so frequently. And I just want to say like, damn, I can feel your gift like flowing through in the way that you can find <laughs> words for it's things that are even seemingly sometimes indescribable um, for people. So just Thank amazing you. and love that you <clears throat> first started talking about like, I had to first just heal and pull fragments of myself back before I could even start to work consciously between masculine and feminine. And I think that is so, such a beautiful gift to be sharing here in this conversation. And I'm wondering if there's anything else to share around that particular piece. Yeah. So one thing that I'm feeling um, that probably is good to share is just going a little bit into what the other fragments felt like to me. Awesome. Um, and so what it felt like to me, it was almost like um, I had to go back so I had to start with the most wounded parts of me, which were that inner child, that, that, that childlike, naive, beautiful, innocent energy, right? So, so that's even before we get to the masculine feminine, that's that beautiful, beautiful, innocent part of you that in one way or another uh, was hurt, was wounded uh, before they even had the the mental capacity to to know what was happening to them or to give meaning to what was happening to them and so i had to start there because if i hadn't started in the inner child the you know the inner child people a lot of people don't realize this but if your inner child is not addressed and healed you are not getting to masculine feminine energy because she's going to be throwing a shit tantrum Every single time you want to go into these more adult energies, right? Mm -hmm. the, the child doesn't understand. They, they don't understand. And they're going to be in those holding patterns because they're wounded and they're hurt. And a lot of times they've been left in the basement by the adult aspects of you. And the, you lead the adult, you know, I, I talked, it's, it's so interesting because I have this conversation. I, I don't do single sessions anymore, but I used to coach people individually. And uh, we would, I, I had so many conversations around this topic where the person would say to me, I am so angry at my mom and my dad because, you know, I was abused by them and they did this to me and da, 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 da. And so they're talking, talking, talking about what happened to them. And then they don't realize that they have grown up and they are internally replicating what they experienced in childhood. So their internal masculine feminine energy is pushing and neglecting the inner child down to the basement and they're busy pissed off at their parents. And, and, and that's always a breakthrough for clients when I've done this is for them to realize, wait a minute, 
Look at what you're doing to your inner child right now. And if you do not, if you don't take this beautiful masculine and feminine energy, and if you don't go get that inner child, and if you do not nurture her, and if you don't hug her, you have got to give your inner child what your parents did not give you. Yep. Yep. And it's as soon as they go down to the basement and they nurture that inner child and they begin to do this beautiful and delicate process. It's a delicate process. You know, I've worked with so many people who sometimes it takes, you know, we, we, we do regressions and we try to get them back to their inner child. And sometimes it takes five or 10 times of them trying to even connect to their inner child because the inner child won't talk to them because it doesn't trust them. Totally. And so, but it's as soon as they start to do this work now, suddenly the inner child sits in the back seat in the child seat and the adults are driving the car. And now you can get to more mature energies as that masculine and that feminine energy. So for me, the healing of fragmentation and getting into the masculine and feminine energy work had to come after me addressing this beautiful, tender child that had been abused. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So I'd love that you're sharing that. And I would love to just weave a tiny little piece of my story in to kind of give everyone this perspective of it is so unique. Our journeys are so unique to us and our paths and what comes when and how they show up. And um, yeah, so that's the, the aim of why I want to share this tiny little piece. For me, it was when I started working with the different faces of the feminine that I was able to go into those deep realms of the inner child and it was working with great mother. So it was really working that. with the archetypal energy, feminine archetypal energy of great mother that got me into inner child. And in that energy, embodying that energy, I was able to come into unconditional loving mother energy. I was I able to that. come into this like compassionate, loving energy, and then able to access my inner child and heal her with this energy of great mother, not human mother, but great mother. And um, so it's just, it's, it's, I'm, it's I'm, amazing how we, we get to the same place through, this is a great conversation because that's really like healing. We get to the same place through different roads, right? Yes. Yes. And it's that, you know, following that still small voice within that inner call like wow it's mother mary is singing to me for whatever reason or doing this work in this way on just inner child practices i'm called this way um so i just love i love how we're i love that i love that aspect because you know like as you're telling your story i can for me that's probably why I didn't go through that path because I had a huge mother wound. And so there's no way you're getting to my wounded inner child by going through the mother. (laughs) So so it's so interesting. It's so beautiful, but it's, it's beautiful in the sense that that, that was actually one of the hardest faces of the feminine for me to accept. Wow. Was yeah. And, and it was really interesting. And I started to heal that wound by first working through mother earth archetypal earth, not, not personalized archetypal earth. And then I started to come up until eventually I got to a point where, you know, I had some difficult conversations even with my mother and our relationship changed, but it was only, I couldn't, I, I had to go through Mother Earth first, uh-huh. and then, <laughs> and then from there come up. But it's so beautiful to hear your story because it, it's such a wonderful way to to heal the inner child when you can, you know, to use that mother energy because it's so beautiful and it's so yeah. And, and, it's, and it probably went fast. Did it go fast for you when you did went, that? It went fast and deep because my brain wasn't at all in the way because it was so embodied it was all embodied and it was way beyond the brain so it was fast and deep and quick it was for me it felt like just ripping the band-aid off yeah Yeah. that's what the inner child needs right like at the end of the day that it's that beautiful nurturing unconditionally loving just holding kind of energy that's all the inner child has ever needed right so here's an interesting thing in an in-person retreat or workshop I will very rarely, I can maybe remember three times 
going into dark goddess energy, like fierce feminine energy without doing an inner child piece because you can't access her. You cannot access the dark feminine without having a certain level of inner child healing done or in those moments we can do a, a you know it's it's a quick healing a quick comforting like you're okay little one i love you i see you we're going to go do some adult work over here let me put you in a safe place i love you and now we're going to go over here and we're going to work with some fierce feminine stuff but i mean rarely have i done a workshop or a retreat without doing inner child work because it's that it's that it will exactly what you're saying is throw the tantrum and you are not going anywhere you are no not way. getting into medusa kali lilith any no, you no. Go anywhere you'll just sit no, there because, like you know because <laughs> your child is going uh-uh not safe not safe not safe not safe exactly and as soon as the inner child does that you know like as soon as the inner child starts saying not safe not safe your entire nervous system goes off and so you cannot go into the depths of the feminine with your nervous system going off with you know false alarms right so the body has to be i mean that's that's quintessential feminine right like the the body is when you feel safe right like when you feel safe right? That feminine, that feminine, have you ever read the book, uh, the Magdalene manuscript by Tom Kenyon, the, the energy love it. healer? That... Love it. Love it. Yes. Oh my God. I, 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 I have so many notes on that. I just, I love that. I love that, that book. And, and there's one aspect that I underlined a lot is, is in the book where he talks about how that feminine energy will not open fully her power unless she feels safe and loved and appreciated and and that just really resonated with me so so strongly so that's that's another reason why that inner child needs to be healed because if if your body doesn't feel safe it's hard to go deeper and deeper into feminine right would you agree hundred percent hundred percent this also takes me to this piece of the stronger more developed our masculine is and healthier healed our masculine is and can hold because masculine creates a safe space creates that container does the holding is the witness to right so there's also this level of either the space being held so you can do deep 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 feminine work if the space that you're in is held and by very masculine energy, which you are safe, you are protected, right? This is the container you can let go of having to stay alive, right? You can let go of like survival and making sure that the tigers aren't coming in and you can let go of that to allow for the feminine to just dance, right? And so it's either, in spaces but like hearing your journey and just going yeah like yes you have this amazing masculine capacity and to go your capacity to hold to open to embody to express the feminine within your own being is that much greater because you can honor love hold respect protect and create that safe space would you how does that feel or any that words feels that, that feels amazing yeah and and you know, and that's probably why, um, you know, going into the feminine, especially lately, going into the feminine has become an easier task for me in the sense that, that, you know, now that my masculine is less wounded, right? Because a wounded masculine won't hold space for anything, really, like, nope. there's no, nope. but as soon as that masculine starts to heal, and, and you're able to express a more authentic masculine, that's a really good point that as soon as that authentic healed masculine can express itself, then you can go deeper into the feminine. That's an amazing way to see it. Yeah, for sure. And when that masculine comes into, for me, I witness and had to work through this in myself too, is this distrust of the feminine, mm. right? That's a big part of the wounding and that's just a collective part of the wounding in the masculine is I don't I don't trust you you're not consistent you don't keep your word you change all the fucking time you're not logical you're not rational you're not blah, 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 right you're <laughs> you're a mess 
you're so powerful like it's also you are so fucking powerful you freak me out so if i can control you and only have you express nice girl then i feel okay right and so when that's just an aspect of healing the masculine so to just bring a few more words maybe to what you're sharing yeah is, but then what starts to happen is masculine in a starts to have this deep fucking reverence for the feminine like oh i can feel that so much especially lately yes such fucking reverence like you are life you are love you are beauty and that reverence for the feminine invokes the feminine right and so in our beings in our sacred relationship in any relationships in the world just watching the masculine come into this place of i worship you i fucking worship you right and then and then what that creates around safety around i mean that's beyond safety that's just literally invoking the feminine it's yeah. literally yeah. just like dance dance in the world dance in this relationship dance while making like dance because i am devoted to i am in such awe of you yeah and that is something that i have definitely felt that shift in that masculine towards veneration and honoring of of the feminine and as soon as i came into more of that energy the feminine started to come up more so absolutely i could feel that within me totally 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 but but the little side note here is that for some of us or maybe for a lot of us um the healing of that masculine energy sometimes is not is not easy and takes time especially if you have a lot of wounding of the masculine especially if you have a lot of wounding of the masculine around violence and dishonoring of the feminine right because that's got to that's got to be cleaned up right and i love christina i love that you are bringing this through because i i've worked with thousands and thousands and thousands of women and i don't feel very many women holding what you're holding and expressing what you're expressing. So I'm almost seeing this like, I don't know, just part of your karmic path, part of your dharma, part of your gift to the world, your service to the world is to be asked to work through that warrior wounding, that masculine wounding in a female body. So even what you shared at the start and to be bringing that out into the world. I didn't personally have those big imprints. I had more wounding around the feminine side. Mm. And if I open to this, I will be raped. If I open to this, okay. I will be used. I will be controlled. I will be persecuted. I will be right. And so to hear you holding this piece and talking about it is just a huge gift. And it's a huge gift to our community. And so I feel like maybe there's more to go into around that more to share anything that you feel to share around that warrior that dishonoring of the feminine and maybe different threads or different ways that you've worked through it or what you would share with others who are bumping up against that or witnessing that in themselves or even in their partners potentially yeah yeah so so for me um, when it came to working with the the wounded aspect of the masculine energy, it took time. So it was it wasn't an easy path for me first because I didn't know how to identify that it was masculine wounding to begin with. And I think that's right. Like, do, would you agree? That's probably a major issue to begin with, is that a lot of times we don't know how to, how to put put this into words. We don't know how to say this is my masculine side that's. Uh, that's repressing the feminine, or this is my masculine side that's dishonoring the feminine. But, but for example, you know, you can see this in different in different behaviors. So, if um, if your feminine side is having difficulty coming out, if you're having difficulty being vulnerable, if you're having difficulty opening up, um, if you're having difficulty standing in your power. So if, if you're seeing these things within you, don't just look at the feminine side, look at the masculine side that may actually be pushing her down 
And so it may not be an issue of the feminine. It may be an issue of an overpowering, overriding masculine that just doesn't, um, you know, doesn't let that feminine come up. For me, yeah, there were imprints of dishonoring energy for sure, for sure. And I'll, I'll give you a little tidbit, uh, just a real life example of how this, because I've had, I've done so many, I've looked back on my life and I, I can kind of put the puzzle pieces together, right? Like hindsight, hindsight is amazing. Uh-huh. And I remember that, um, you know, with previous partners, if a partner sexually would come up to me and say, you know, I want you to dominate me, or I want you to be a little bit rough with me in bed, I would get tremendously uncomfortable. And I didn't, I didn't know how to give words to that, but now I do. I didn't feel comfortable because at some point this masculine had to done that and he didn't feel too comfortable repeating that pattern again. And I could feel it inside of me. And so I, I when now, when I look back, I understand that it was a, a wounded masculine having to do a lot, not just with the dishonoring. So the dishonoring aspect was there for sure. But for me, particularly, it was the warring templates that were really strong. So, so if you have a masculine that's been a warrior for so long, fighting, 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 violence, 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 you're not going to get to your feminine because you have a masculine energy standing with the sword right there. He will not let you get to the feminine. So that masculine must disarm. How do you get that masculine to disarm? For me, it was a lot of mantra. So I, I speak a lot to my masculine and it works. Some people, you know, you, some spiritual teachers will say that's bullshit. That's just the ego talking to itself. I don't give a shit. It works for me and it's worked for thousands of clients. So I'm going to keep using this. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so, so the inner talk works really well for my masculine energy. And the way that I addressed it is I would talk to him. So I would say, you know, um, I don't need protection anymore. It's mm-hmm. safe to put down the sword. I'm powerful on my own. So it was almost like the feminine addressing the masculine. Um, You know, you you can just, you can relax, you can set the sword down. And as soon as the masculine started to disarm, because if the masculine realizes that they don't need to protect what they think they're protecting, because what they think they're protecting, they think they're protecting something fragile and weak and powerless and whatever. Meanwhile, they're protecting the freaking creation energy of the entire universe. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, yep. You, you really don't need to protect me, buddy. Thanks. I really appreciate it. You and that little sword, but I'm creation energy. <laughs> I hate I'm you. A, I exactly, exactly. You came out of me. Like literally. (laughs) And so as soon as the masculine starts to realize that there's nothing fragile or powerless that he needs to protect, then the sword comes down. When the sword comes down, now we come to phase two of healing the masculine. Mm. And phase two of healing the masculine is once that sword is down, now you have to convince this masculine that he is deserving of love. Yes. Yes. And you have to convince this masculine to accept love because he doesn't want to accept love because he's done horrible things on the planet and he thinks he doesn't deserve sweetness and he doesn't deserve love and he doesn't deserve to be embraced by the very energy that he has raped and pillaged and all of that. And so then you get to that phase. And, And by the time I got to that phase, it was easier for me because at that point, my feminine was strong enough that she would just come in and now there are no words. So I stopped the inner talk at that point. For me, the hardest phase was phase one of getting him to put his sword down wow. um, and how that translated, you know, kind of in inner tumultuous relationships, but with a feminine, but outer tumultuous relationships also. Um, so that's kind of, you know, the extra tidbit I would give probably on this masculine energy. Well, I mean, that is invaluable, invaluable. And I just, you know, anyone listening, like it is such a beautiful moment to reflect on this. Like if it's pausing this and just 
hanging out for a minute because that was a lot that Christina just shared. I mean, she just gave like three steps, the three steps to healing the masculine and to feel that in ourselves. I know I've had to work a little bit in that territory. It's not huge templates in me that I've worked through. Mm -hmm. My partner, on the other hand, you just spoke his journey. And so just for everyone to, you know, honor others in their lives, whether it be, you know, dads, moms, some moms, it doesn't matter. Again, this gender doesn't matter, but, you know, maybe just honoring some of these templates and really honoring what others journeys might be that is not necessarily the one that we're going through. Because I think sometimes we, I hear this so often is we sometimes you know, project because it's through our own lens of experience that we project our journey onto another and go, well, why aren't you working through this feminine wounding that I'm working through? Well, because they're working through the masculine templates. They have different templates than you do. And I'm kind of sharing this from a relationship standpoint and from a sacred relationship standpoint. And it's one of the big things that comes up in our community is like, fuck how do we and i could so relate to you christina when you were like there is a part of me that wants to be a hermit and i'm good but when i go deeper i know what i'm called to do in yeah, this yeah. life is to and i always call it like it's where the the rubber hits the road is in relationship like the rubber hits the road i could sit on a mat i could be in meditation or out in the woods with my dog all day long and i'm an enlightened fucking being right but then mom calls or my partner's on the phone right and you're just like this is it, right like the rubber hits the road this is this is oh yeah that's when that's when you really you know i'm laughing because you know, in my life, it was hysterical because I, I had a spiritual awakening. I went into four straight years of hermit mode. So I was literally living on my own, middle of the forest. I was as happy as a clam. Oh yeah, that's enlightenment, that was the thought, Christina. Yeah, this is amazing. And then what happens four years into it, I meet someone and she plucks me out of the forest and takes me to downtown Lisbon in Portugal. Wow. And as soon as I land, I'm like, what the hell's going on? This isn't a relationship. I'm getting the hell out of here. I'm going back to my forest. <laughs> and I laugh at it now. It was immensely painful at the time, but man, was it an exercise in humility because it is so much easier to be in an ashram or a cave in the Himalayas or, you know, it's so much easier. And I, I honor the paths of the people that do this, that want to do you know their mission solo because i've done this many lifetimes too but goddamn do i honor the people that are here to do it in relationship and to and to change the templates of relationships to something more elevated because we go through shit to be able to you know to be able to hold that kind of harmonics within us and yeah. and to be able to hold that kind of union within us so then it even has a chance of expressing outward right 100% hundred percent words I always use are are mystics outside of monasteries those of us called to be mystics outside of monasteries and I such a similar path to you two years in the woods came out moved to Sydney Australia with a man I was like what the fuck is this <laughs> I'm like shit I was good in the woods I was good this is fucked this is not I don't know what's wrong with me or what's wrong with you but this is not but it's I'm, I'm with you. And I know that so many of at least my community is called to be mystics outside of monasteries, yeah. called to have children, is called to be in relationship, is called to be working with the energetics of money, of home, of community, yeah. right? And yeah. I, it is like just- to It's hear not easy, right? No. It's not, it's especially right now and especially when you know it, it's it's hysterical because when i you know i i i really just love to laugh at myself because you know life is life is just a comedy right like it's just a freaking comedy right so i look at my life and i've mastered so many things and then when it comes to relationships i'm like a freaking teenager who hasn't graduated high school yet it's hysterical 
And, but, but some things, some things I have learned about sacred relationship. And, and I think right now this is pertinent for everyone out there who's looking for sacred relationship. It's first to make the decision that you're looking for sacred relationship and sacred partnership. You've got to make, it's got to be a conscious decision because as soon as I didn't, I didn't know to call it sacred partnership. I called it relationship. And so a part of me was constantly looking for the one, those were the words. And I had this constant ping in my heart going out. And I, and for a long time, I thought that was dysfunctional. I thought I had bonding wounds. I thought, what the hell is wrong with you, Tina? Like, why are you constantly looking for someone? What, what is wrong with you? Until I realized that I had come imprinted with the, the uh. mission of sacred partnership. Now that changed things for me. But that's only the beginning, because when you realize that you want to be in sacred partnership, the second step is calling the right partner. Yep. Yep. Let me repeat that again, because that's so important. Calling in the right partner and not trying to force a potential partner or a, a new partner that's coming in, not trying to force them to be your sacred partner. You have to call the partner in and the partner has to be ready at a certain level to at least want to go into sacred partnership with you. Because I can't tell you the amount of times, and this is a problem with women, the amount of times that clients have told me, oh, if only my partner were to wake up and change, our relationship would be amazing. Or they start dating and they date a random man, nothing wrong with a random man, but I think your audience and my audience will understand what I mean by that. An unawakened man that maybe hasn't done his, uh, his inner journey, they go on a dating app and they go on a date with Mr. Regular and then they wanna make Mr. Regular into a sacred partner. Yes, 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 yes. I, it's this piece of being so discerning and honoring another person's path. Like having the, the ability to not interweave, not project something onto them or try to live a fairy tale. We project the sacred relationship onto someone, but to stand back and go, who is this person? What is their soul's journey? It's not sacred relationship. I honor that. If I'm going to ask someone to honor my journey as, you know, whatever it is that I'm doing in this lifetime, I need to honor theirs. And that's yes. like the words that I kind of bring to it is you're yes. asking for your path to be honored, which could be sacred relationship, could be opening up to medicine woman mysteries, could whatever it is. If you're asking for that, you best be giving it. You best be giving it and you best get your projective stuff out of there. So you're not trying to make them into something that they're not and going, why are they not doing the work? Because yeah. that's not their soul's journey in this lifetime. Let them do what they came here to do. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, wow, yeah. we got fired and, up and about that. I know. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Or it could be just a question of timing. Maybe that person that's in front of you is not ready for sacred relationship now. So what the hell do you do when that happens? Yeah. Like, what do you do? Are you going to be waiting for them your whole life? Or are you going to turn around and you're going to say, I call in the divine, my divine partner in this moment. Now, that's work that I've had to do. Oh. And I know it's not easy. And I know it's not easy, but I promise one thing, that if that inner child and the wounded aspects of this feminine and masculine are dealt with to a certain degree, especially bonding wounds, bonding wounds are essential to heal. Yes. If bonding wounds are healed and you're not behaving from a childish kind of energy, because the inner child is beautiful, but childish energy, childlike energy is wonderful. Childish energy is not so much. It's very destructive. So if you can pull yourself up from that more immature, childish kind of wounded bonding kind of energy, there's no problem in doing this work because you say, 
very objectively, I love this person. This person seems amazing, but this person isn't right for me. And, and I've had this conversation with so many people because they come to me and they say, but I love him. Shouldn't love be enough? No, it's not. No, it's not. I can love someone and love me and know that in that moment, our paths are not meant to go into sacred partnership. Maybe our paths were meant to go in a regular relationship. And I use air quotes here, not as a form of judgment, because there are a lot of people that want to live regular relationships. They just want to come home to someone and they just want to say, hi, honey, how you doing? And they just want to have, you know, a regular relationship, which are the relationships that we've had up until now. But there's a group of us that's here and I call them template changers. There's a group of us that's here that's called to sacred partnership. And when you're called to sacred partnership, you have to leave regular relationship shenanigans behind. And one of those regular relationship shenanigans is trying to manipulate or mold the other person to become who you want them to be because you are not strong enough in yourself to be able to discern and say, this isn't right for me, even though I love you. Mm-hmm. I need to go this way or I need to call in a different partner. And that's something that I've had to work in myself. And I, I still work uh, at that in different levels because there's still a part of me that says, I'm calling in sacred partnership. And then about a fraction of a second later, I say, but don't send me any crazy freaking women universe. Do not send me crazy women again because I am tired of crazy women. I'm calling in a sacred partner. She better not be crazy. (laughs) Oh my God, woman, you are the best. true story I have done this so many times oh my gosh well I have left my relationship so many times right to be super open because it was not aligning in that moment and at least at least you could do that I was I had the opposite pattern I never left relationships I have never ended a relationship in my life I was always left Thank God that was the form of guidance that the universe gave me was, all right, she's not getting her shit together. Let's, let's bring in a third party or let's shake this thing up. And that's what the universe would do. And then it would be this catastrophic ending to my connections. And then I would be wounded and heartbroken. But then as soon as that mature part would, would rise, I would say to myself, of course, the universe did that because I knew I felt viscerally that that connection was not right for me and I never left. Yep, yep, yep. Woman, we need to so do another to episode you. at some point on sacred relationship where you and I just yeah. go for it and share everything we can around healing bond wounds, healing you know our ancestral lines. For me, that was a huge thing. Mm. For me, it was also my service versus being in relationship how can i serve the world in the way that i know that i'm here to do and be in relationship and working through the both and i can do both but this hard belief system that it's one or the other you better pick sunshine and that was for me a past life template that i had to work through but i think woman we need to do something around this where we just go go for it awesome okay so i know we're at about an hour but I want to just ask, is there any last thing that you want to share with your community, my community, whoever runs into this episode, any last thing totally open to going anywhere, but any last like gift you want to impart or piece words that you want to share before we close yeah. things? Um, so probably the only thing that's that's coming now to me is just the the piece, a refocusing of the piece that we talked about in terms of uh, quieting and healing that masculine and then going into the feminine. I think that was a really important aspect of our conversation today, um, especially because I don't know within your audience, but within my audience, um, you know, the majority, especially women, because I work majority with women. Um, 
we're, we're very heavily templated with that masculine energy. It's not, oh, for a lot of women, it's not an authentic, real uh, uh, energy dominance. For me, the masculine is naturally dominant, but for a lot of women, it's been programmed in them to be, you know, hustlers and especially, especially Americans, right? Like there's a heavy, heavy uh, masculine templating. And so for me, that piece of the puzzle of, starting to work with the feminine, but also disarming that masculine so that you can go deeper, disarming the masculine so that you could go deeper. That was such an important part of my work within myself. Um, and then once into the feminine, I would, I would really, the, the advice I would give is one of courage, is just, is really one of courage because when you start to touch the faces of the feminine that are most powerful, then you start to realize why they've been repressed for thousands of years because they are, they feel like a freaking nuclear explosions going on in your body. And you're like, what the hell is happening? So a little bit of, I would say courage, wouldn't you? Courage to go deeper and deeper and deeper into the feminine mysteries. But the more you do that, the more alive you become. That, that's been the byproduct of the work with the divine feminine is I feel more alive. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm aging backwards also. Like I feel more alive um, and more content just with being where I am, content with just waking up and having a nice cup of coffee and just being as opposed to content because I'm so successful and I did all these things in the outer world and look what all that I'm doing. No, just content with just, just being right here, having this conversation with you and, 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 and just being, that has really shifted the deeper you go uh, with feminine. And I think that's, that's definitely worth exploring for sure. Oh, I love all of that. Love all of that. This conversation is so full. So there's so much and it's so beautiful. And I want you to just finally share like one last piece of where can everyone find you? Where, you know, if someone's called to like, wow, I want, I want to work more with Christina. I want to like do some of this. Where's the best place for people to go? So probably the best place to start and or probably where I'm, where I'm at the most is on YouTube. So the majority of people find me on YouTube, um, lots of videos on YouTube. So you can just, you know, on the YouTube search bar, just put in Christina Lopes and you'll find my channel quickly, or you can find my videos and my work through just Christina Lopes.com. Just literally. Her videos um, that, are um, fucking amazing. <laughs> thank you, sister. So are yours. I love, love, love your work. Especially when I'm yelling and screaming at everyone. <laughs> Get in there! Did we did we tell your audience my story of that? Were we already? No, let's end on that. that. Let's end on that. This is an awesome <laughs> ending. We'll end on that. This is so good. So so when I first was introduced to your work, my masculine was still being a little shit face, and so someone recommended your work, and I went on YouTube and I looked up one of your videos, and up you come and you start talking in that powerful feminine, whatever the hell. And I'm looking at it and I could feel my masculine go like, what the fuck is wrong with this chick? Like, what in the hell is this? Like, why would someone recommend this to me? This makes no, I have no idea what the hell she's saying. And so I caught myself in that moment and I knew it was my masculine. I'm like, holy shit, it's my masculine judging the feminine. So I proceeded to watch like three or four of your videos back to back. And I forced my masculine to just sit there and watch. And then after the third and fourth, I, I bought one of your courses and I was totally into your work, but it was oh there. <laughs> There's this funny thing that I do oftentimes. And it's like when that's happening in someone and, you know, toward the feminine or whatever is coming through is this, fuck you, Sabrina, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> and I love it. I love it. I'm like, yes. I'm gonna keep it. It's, it's hysterical, but 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 you have to have a certain level of awareness that that's what's happening. Like, to but me, it was it was amazing to me. She comes when she comes. Like until you're ready for her, you can't see her. You can't. She comes when she comes. That's it. 
And there is this mystical divine timing to it where you will see her when you see her, like she will rise for you when you're ready. And until then you either can't see her or you fucking hate her, or you push it off as woo woo nonsense or crazy bitch or, you know, whatever it is. And so, yeah. 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 Thank you so much, sister. I love your work. Thank you. you I love you. I love this conversation. I love your work. Um, It was amazing. Go check out Christina Lopes on YouTube. Love you all. See you when I see you, where I see you, and how I see you.